Hey guys, today I'm talking about lithium batteries and they often go bad and we have to dispose of them or throw them away, but that's usually a big mistake because there is a way to completely restore these batteries in less than 30 seconds. Now, depending on what brand you got, they may look slightly different than this. Some of them, some of the older models have kind of a tower in the middle and you can even do that with those, but these are the more modern, more common types you see. But I'm gonna show you how to take a picture frame holder, one of these right here, and restore the battery, reset it, and then you'll have many more years of life from your battery. So don't throw it away, don't recycle it. Try this trick first and you'll save yourself anywhere from one to $200. So guys, the first thing I wanna tell you is about safety and we wanna make sure that when we're doing this process, cause these batteries have been known to explode, but that's usually under extreme and extremely rare circumstances. So I wanna say up front, don't do this procedure unless you're pretty much mechanically have a good aptitude for it. But make sure you wear safety glasses and a good pair of gloves. So it's really important and also have a fire extinguisher nearby because these batteries, the lithium batteries, have been known to just spontaneously explode. And I'll show you a way you can kind of figure out what might be going on inside the battery without having to open it up and you'll know if there's a danger to it and you just need to leave it alone. Now a couple more tips on safety is you wanna make sure you're in a well ventilated area when you're doing this. Don't work on any battery that's cracked or heating or if you feel warmth to it or it seems to be swollen or disformed or misformed in any way. And also you wanna make sure that you don't have any flammable liquids to near these because there's always a chance of even a small spark setting off an explosion. So just remember, we're dealing with electricity here, although not as much as probably your household current, but it is still a slight danger. So again, if you're not have a good aptitude for doing things like this, just avoid it and let someone else to do it. So guys, I want to demonstrate on exactly what's happening here. Now this normal blinking light means the battery is charging. And once it becomes a solid green on these black and Decker 20 volt lithium batteries, it, like I said, is fully charged when you see solid green. Now we're going to remove this one and I'm going to take this one out and I'm going to install this one into our charger and nothing, no green light, nothing. So it's the battery charger is firmly seated on the battery, but I'm getting nothing, no green light, nothing. So this battery would appear to be dead, but that's not exactly true. So I'm going to show you how to get around that. Same thing with a DeWalt battery holder like this. This one, this particular battery is not taking a charge at all. So that's the issue is you're not getting any type of light or it's not recognizing the battery at all. So let's move on to the way to fit, remedy this problem in 30 seconds, but I'm gonna go over quite a few other ways how you can prevent it and what might be causing it. Now I just wanna do one more test on this battery and show you that I'm getting nothing. It's completely dead and just pulling the trigger on our drill, nothing. Let's put our partially charged battery into our drill. So the drill's working, the charge is working, but this particular battery right here is completely dead. So most people might just dispose of it, recycle it, or just leave it sitting and never use it again. So I'm gonna show you exactly what's, the wrong, what's wrong with this battery and how to quickly restore it to not like new condition, but working condition that might give you two, three, or even four more years of service. Now, the first thing we need to do, we need to inspect the battery terminals, and that's a little hard to do because it's a little bit hard to see in there. So I would recommend getting a super bright flashlight and look down in there and see how much corrosion you see. Now, these lights, I purchased this ultimately. <laughs> I'm not sure what maker it is, but my wife ordered this, and it is just super bright. So you can see really well down into the terminals, and you need to do an inspection and look for corrosion. There's a few things that can happen on these terminals. If you're woodworking, there can be a lot of dust that can get in there. If you're doing drywall, a lot of times drywall dust can get in there. If you're working outside, humidity could get in there and cause some corrosion. So you just wanna take an ordinary toothbrush and clean up the inside of these. Now you can use a metal brush. I've got some automobile detailing brush for under the hood if you're trying to make your engine look a little bit better. And I'll put a link in the description. These these are a lot stronger. You wanna do one at a time, but I think it's safer to do just an ordinary toothbrush. You can get in there pretty good and clean them up quite well. And there's another item I'm gonna show you that makes sure you get in there. It's a safe thing to do and just make sure they're extremely clean and remove any dust, but that would not remove some of the corrosion that might've happened from excessive moisture or humidity. So I'll show you a couple items you can use to get in there and do that. So there's a couple of things you probably have around your home, super simple, such as an emery board 
or you can use something like sandpaper, but sandpaper is what I choose to use. So I'm just going to cut a small, maybe one inch by two inch piece of sandpaper. And what we want to do with this one little tiny piece of sandpaper, we want to go through each terminal here and we just want to put it in there and lightly sand one side, then flip it over since this is not sandpaper on that side and do the same thing. Go through each terminal and try to remove any corrosion. You may have to do this for 20 to 30 seconds on each side and each terminal if you have a lot of corrosion in your battery. So just go through each one of them. I'm doing it kind of quick now because I don't want to make this a five minute video about sanding terminals. But anyways, just do that on each one until you get to the last one. And the sandpaper is really a little bit on the gritty side, but it's not super, super rough sandpaper. I forget, I think this was 240, I believe. So we went through all four of them. We've sanded all four terminals, then go back with your toothbrush and do that, clean out any possible large debris. And then what's even better to do is to take some compressed air in a can and blow that out. Get all of the possible debris that you just removed, all of the possible, whether it might be sawdust or anything that might have gotten there, just common dirt, anything, corrosion. We want to make sure we get these as clean as possible. Now, there's another thing to take into consideration too. Go through your charger and look at each one of these and make sure there's no corrosion on these because it could be not only the battery that's causing this problem, but it could be your charger, whether you have this tight set the battery sits inside side of it or just the one that pushes over it like that. So just make sure you clean each one of these thoroughly, go through the same process with sandpaper, the toothbrush, and you can even use your wire brush. Make sure this is unplugged when you do your wire brush because you'll be contacting all these at the same time with a wire brush. So I want to say something about safety here that we've got the battery in hand and probably before we even do this first step, I should have said this right here, inspect the battery carefully. Look for swelling, feel for any heat, look for any cracks that were any liquid might be leaking out. If any of these things are happening, the cells inside of it may be damaged and possibly it could be a problem. So just dispose of it properly if any of the, those are the case. But I just want to keep going over safety as much as possible because I don't want anybody to be harmed by doing this procedure. Now I want to say something about two features that your charger may have that mine does not, but there's a wake up or boost mode that may be enabled or you may be able to possibly use on your chargers. Neither one of these have that. This is just a super simple charger from Black & Decker and this is just a common DeWalt charger and there's nowhere on here where it says boost or wake up mode. So if you do see that, that can help with an overly discharged battery. So carefully look at your charger and look for any one of those. If you still have the instructions that came with your charger, take a look in there and see if you can find anything that says anything about boost or wake up mode. Now the way you're going to do this, you're going to need two batteries identical. Now there's a slight difference in cosmetically on these, but this is a 20 volt lithium made by Black & Decker. This is a 20 volt Black & Decker. So we both, we have both batteries being from the same manufacturer and the same voltage. So you want to make sure that you don't mix and match batteries. You'll need one that's fully charged and the other that is completely not working or not taking a charge on your current charger. So guys, there's one more step to making sure we get the best possible connection between our charger and our battery. You can buy some CAN products there for electrical conductivity that will help the charger and the battery make better connection. And you can also use something that may be considered unconventional. I'm sure it's going to be controversial, but you can take just a quick blast of WD-40 and put just a small amount in there. Now you want to make sure you dry this thoroughly, wipe it down, and then take your air blaster again and blast any excess out of there. We want to make sure we remove all of it in case there is a, there usually is a small spark when you're connecting this. So although WD-40 is not super flammable, there is that possibility. So we want to wait one hour before we try this method. Just make sure the battery, the WD-40 is dried out because we're trying to give this battery the best possible chance to make good connection. So let's blast any WD-40 out of there. Now you can use a variety of wires. This is 20 gauge pet containment wire. I use this to contain a pet in a specific area with a spe special collar and it just stops the pet from crossing over that boundary. But you want to use any type of wire that's not too large and you're going to need two, excuse me, two different strips of this about 
10 to 12 inches and you're going to need to strip it off so make sure whatever type of wire you're using make sure it is jacketed with some type of plastic jacket on it so the nickname for this procedure is the parallel jump method or the bump method so a lot of people know about this but then there's a lot of people out there that thinking they're gonna to have to buy a new hundred and fifty or two hundred dollar battery each time it fails to take a charge so the nickname of this is the parallel jump method so next we're cutting about 10 to 12 inches off of our roll one and again we're gonna need a second one and that is two and we're also going to need to take our wire strippers and strip off about one inch of the end and so we have about an inch of this exposed on each end of this. A little bit hard to see off camera. I'm trying to watch the camera at the same time I'm doing this to make sure I'm in frame. So there we have it. We have two wires on each end, roughly about an inch in length and do this to both wires. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our picture hangers here and we're gonna straighten out this bottom side here and the side that you put your little small nail in that you would nail onto the drywall to hang your picture, you're gonna keep that in this bend movement there. So just carefully do this slowly. Most of the time these are either made out of steel or aluminum. There's some metals that won't conduct electricity so just make sure you're getting something that's made of steel or aluminum. And so there you have a straight piece. Take your wire and thread it through the end and fold it back over make sure it's making good contact with the metal just wrap it around there and so you should have something that looks like this once you get through you're going to do this on both ends of each piece of wire same thing on the opposite end take your piece there i'm going to straighten this piece out yet but i'm about to take your and you can do this by hand on some of these types are made out of aluminum they're really easy to do so remember you're straightening it out there. So now we have one piece of wire with two ends that are straight. And before we move on, I need to tell you a couple of safety things you need to do first. Now this next procedure, you need to be making sure you're wearing glasses, protective safety glasses. If you wear glasses like I do, you can order a pair of these type of, I guess you'd call them goggles, but you can put it over your current or existing glasses and it makes it a lot easier. So your, your glass prescription lenses are not in the way. These are a little bit harder to put on, but you don't wear glasses something like this is great again i'll put all the links in the description to everything i'm using also you want to use a good pair of gloves before you do this this proceed next procedure takes less than 15 seconds now i want to show you a couple things about this battery i'm going to bring it as close as possible on the left side you see right here a negative and on the opposite side you see positive you want to hook up to each battery you want to hook up battery on your left you want to hook this negative to negative and positive to positive. So make sure you don't reverse that. It's very important. And you're going to only need to do this for about 15 seconds or less. We're just trying to give this battery that's dead. I believe it was this one that was dead. But I've got a couple in here that I'm having to do this to today. So I hope I haven't got them mixed up there. But I'll have to test it after I get through. But we're going to do negative to negative and positive to positive. Put on our safety glasses. And again, this makes it a lot easier now that you have that. Just slide that in there like that. Do the same thing on the other side. Make sure you're putting it into the right slot. Same thing on the opposite side. Make sure the metal pieces do not touch each other. Time yourself at about 10 seconds, you could go as long as 15, but you don't need to go longer than that because we're gonna do the first one as a test run. Carefully remove both sides. Don't let the metal touch as you're removing everything, just keep everything separate, and then we can do a test. Now this procedure has raised the voltage enough for charger recognition. So as soon as you take your cables out, take your charger and put it in there. Let's see, yep, it's recognizing, it's fully seated. So you can see the charger now is recognizing the battery. So now you want to let it get, stay in until, of course, on this black and decker, this will continue to blink until it becomes a full charge and it'll become a solid green. Same thing with DeWalt, DeWalt and all the other brands. You just want to make sure that you raise the battery's voltage to allow it to be recognized by whatever type of charger you have. This will work on all types of batteries. Now, if you have the type of battery that has the stem in the middle or the tower, 
you want to be a little bit more careful because this the prongs are a little bit closer. You're going to have a prong on the left and a prong on the right. Do the same exact procedure except bend it all the way around like this. Ignore the prong in the middle of your tower and on each side of the tower of the thing protruding out you're going to put one on the left side and one on the right side and make sure you connect it the same on an identical battery. Make sure you're going positive to positive and negative to negative. Now I don't have any of that old type of battery. I know they existed for a while there. I think this is the newest version of most lithium batteries for power tools. So generally this happens to batteries when they've been overly discharged, meaning that they're just at too low of a level for the charger to recognize them. If you left the battery overnight inside of something like this and it just completely drained the battery to zero or if you overuse the battery just to the point where there was nothing left. So leaving your batteries in whatever type of power tool you have is not a good idea. Always remove them. Even if you don't put them on charge, just make sure you remove the charger and set it aside so there's no possibility of the device draining the battery down to the point where you have to do this procedure. Now sometimes you can have an individual cell that goes bad inside your battery and you can take your battery apart. There's usually four screws that hold it together, but that's beyond the scope of this video. I'm trying to show you what usually happens when the battery has been overly discharged. But if you find that it's still not working, it could mean that one of your cells has gone bad and it may be beyond charging because you'd have to take it apart, test your individual cells and replace the cell that's gone bad if one or possibly more. So there's a few simple rules that you can follow to find out if your battery is beyond hope. If you're using it and you find the battery is extremely warm to the touch, that's a time to recycle it and these batteries can be recycled. Another time is if you use it and it just completely loses power just after a few minutes of use, it could mean that one of your cells have gone bad, one or more. And then lastly, if the device is just sitting or your battery is just sitting, you install it in there and it's still not working at all, it probably means your battery is beyond its total lifespan. Now I do have a Patreon and I'm going to make a PDF form that I'm going to put on there. I'm going to make it to anybody that wants to see it so you don't even have to join Patreon to see this PDF. You just click on the PDF and it is a troubleshooting guide for these type of batteries and it's going to be a little detailed so you can take a look at it and it'll give you the problem and what to do about it. So you can take a look at that and it won't cost you anything. Just go to the Patreon page linked in the description. Now I would recommend only doing this bump method about two times. If you can't recover it and it won't recognize it on the charger after two attempts, it may be beyond recovery. And so that's just one of those things. You've got a very old battery or maybe a defective battery and you just need to dispose of it properly. The second thing is that these batteries are recyclable, so don't throw them in the trash. Take them to a recycle place. I think there was a nationwide chain in America, I haven't been there in a long time, it was called Batteries Plus. I'm not even sure if they're open anymore, but you could take batteries there in the past and have them recycled. But I'm sure you can just Google it and find out exactly where the best place in your zip code to take batteries. Another thing you do, need to do is when you do this bump method or the parallel method to raise voltage, take some painter's tape and put on the bottom of the battery exactly when you did this so you'll know how long it lasted once you did this and then if it happens again you'll know well maybe a year or two three years later maybe this is truly the end of the life of the battery so i love arc being an archivist because i write down on everything even if i collect a seashell from the seashore i'll take a very fine marker and just write where i was at and i wrote the date which seems a little strange but i'm just a natural archivist i love writing things down on everything so i know where i got it so again doing that on the bottom of your battery will help you know how long it's lasted from when you tried this little trick so guys, I do have a Patreon. I'm always adding new content to it. Some of that content will never be on YouTube and some of it will be early release. And again, such as this troubleshooting guide, I'm gonna put that up as a PDF that anybody can download and take a look at. So if you have any questions about this video or any previous video, I hope you'll become a public subscriber first because I filter in the YouTube management page. I filter those type of questions first so I can get to you quickly. I get anywhere from 100 to 300 questions and comments a day and it's nearly impossible to answer everybody as much as I'd like to. So guys, I just want to say thanks so much for watching and have a great day.